why don't you give us the biggest hand clap that you can for two days? I've got a great message and I look forward to preaching. I'd like to preach to you right now, but we've got to do greeting and stuff like that. By the way, had a fantastic day, but I hope you have. I've done two partnership classes today, taught two partnership classes, one this morning, one tonight just before church, and we have seven new partners. Oh, yeah. uh, and, um, what I'm going to do next Sunday, because I trial this this morning with Connect Group leaders, and I'll tell you the best Connect Group leaders, best looking Connect Group leaders this morning are on the screen. Because the other, the other ones looked like they were, they were the, the kangaroo or the deer caught in the headlight. We're up here. And, uh, and the picture, thanks for the picture, mate. Right? That's the video. And I froze that one. I thought, we can never show this to them. <laughs> and go, is that me looking so frightened up there? It's a scary thing, isn't it? So the, the, the seven next week, they'll be on the screens. That's what I'm telling you. Because the three that were on the screens this morning were so relaxed. And the other dozen or so did not. Uh, it's good to be in church tonight. Seven new partners coming very, very soon. You'll hear all about it next week. Move around, greet as many people as you can all around the place. Be relaxed in doing it. No dears put it together. <laughs> Church is so important. Pastor Alethea has been heavy lifting for nearly two years, almost two years, doing both youth ministry and children's ministry. <coughs> and uh, I said this morning, you know, four core ministries, and we got one of these who came in tonight or this morning, and it's got what our four core ministries are there worship. Worship our great Father God, Creator God. All praise on and glory to him. That's why that's number one, but number two is children. Because 85% of, of people that make it, make it in that children's age bracket. And Pastor Levy has been shouldering that, plus youth, and youth is a decreasing ministry, it's a growing ministry, as in our children. And uh, she should be doing half the ministries of the church now, should she? You're right, Catherine. There's something I've got here, isn't it? <laughs> Well, I've had a heavy day too, and Christmas is coming, the kids are getting fat, please put a penny in the old man's hat. I've got a penny of father or two. If you haven't got a father, God bless you. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Hey, now, listen, I am not get excited about a whole lot of things, yeah? Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't get excited. Same excitement. <laughs> we have that. Yay! I don't even know what I'm We've had an appointment for a kids church director to take that weight of Pastor Olivia's, Olivia's shoulders. And that kids church director is Abigail Stevenson, and you should give her a big round of applause. Now Pastor Olivia's going to be walking with her and talking with her until sometime well into January so that she gets the bat on well and truly passed on over. But toward the end of January, and the contract says whenever I decide, uh, that, that'll be it. I believe we'll call this Snip. Snip. Mothership Olivia will walk away. Alright. Okay, kids. 
and, and children's pastor and huge church director on your way. Give them a big round of applause like those kids. I just want to direct your attention to this is what we came in from my neighbor this morning. Uh, cultural values, connect for a connect group. Yeah. Uh, sign up to serve. Give generously. Well, I, I'm going to get back on that you know, give generously to this. And, and because I wanted to ask uh, Catherine before I said, uh, what's OCC? She said, well, I gave you the note down the bottom of the thing that's there. See, this is, this is pretty cool. Give generously. We can always be more generous, yeah? As a church, if, if we're asking you as individuals to give generously, then as a church we need to tithe and give generously. And we've been tithing. And so the crew, which is an acronym for Christians ready, equipped and willing to give help where necessary. And when uh, uh, Paul Jones, one of the deputy principals of Belvoir Secondary College, rang me on Thursday and said that the granddad needs help, I would direct that granddad to the crew. All right? Of course I can, because that's, that's our group. We, we give it up to see what we go there and various times we go. Rich Christian church is is in uh, Longreach. Little church, and uh, I was there back in September, and the guy goes to his congregation, a very small congregation, bearing a witness to our Lord Jesus Christ in an outback of Australia. He says, guys, we just got our rates bill. It's like over $1,000, and I'm not sure where the money's going to come from. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we got our rates bill, which is more expensive than his, in this real estate, and suddenly a check came through the post, or money popped into our account. Now, someone had our BSB and account details of money, it's popped in there, and we go, wow! Someone just gave us the dough. Wouldn't that be good? Well, someone just gave them the dough, it just had to be us. Well, we got a nice letter back, as we do from the crew. And Alpha Australia, you know who Alpha is, and we've done the Alpha course here with us. Sunshine FM, how do you know who Sunshine FM is? We give to Sunshine FM and OCC. Your question should be, I haven't read the bottom so I don't know what it is for. Operation Christmas Child, Samaritan's Purse, we go to them. And I think you should give a big round of applause to this church, for being a generous church, that we can be only generous to be doing it for people that come here at generous with us. And there's a little goal on there, and we want to regularly have eight thousand dollars in the kitty every week we had a group on there a week or so ago last week in fact nine thousand seven hundred and ninety two but the one before that was fairly meager right couldn't <coughs> play the staff out of that one couldn't play anything the power was turned off we had nothing nothing left because we got to play all the utilities just like you but our utilities are bigger than yours and look at the property so we just need to know that's the way it is but you need to give for a couple of reasons one because the church has the need for it and two because god said so and uh, where your treasure is, there will be your heart uh, also. And uh, heart for God, heart for his bride, the church. Wouldn't that be good? Well, we're starting a brand new series tonight, and I want to read you a poem. Uh, I'd like to say I wrote the poem, but I did not. And this poem will sort of launch this series tonight, and I think it'll launch in a very, very good way as soon as I find the poem, which is coming up on the screen near me now. No, oh, it's in the moment since I find it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's not there. Let's see. Okay, I know. Here we go. You ready? This poem. Here we go. You might recognize the words of this poem. So I know that poem, Gordon. Where's it from? Well, I'll tell you from the gun. Hear the word roaring as thunder, with a new future to tell, for the dry season is over. There is a cloud beginning to swell. To the skies, heavy with blessing, lift your eyes off your heart. Jesus Christ opened the heavens. Now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive your rain. We receive your rain. Every seed buried in sorrow, and you will call forth in its time. For you are Lord, Lord of the harvest, calling our hope now to arise. We receive your rain. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you come. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you come. Like a flood, we receive your love when you come. We receive your love. And with great anticipation, we await the promise to come. Everything that you have spoken will come to pass. Let it be done. We receive your reign. It's the title of the song from Melbourne called Like a Cloud, and we sing at least one of the songs from 
that album, we just sang it tonight, and you, you need to go to it and find out more about it. But the group behind that song is, there has been a dream dry season, but now a cloud the size of a man's fist is rising. And we know that cloud is going to grow and the rains are going to burst forth and a new season is coming. And I believe God spoke to me through that song and said, uh, Gordon, there's a new season coming. What I've observed uh, in, in life and in church and in ministry and family over a long time, there are certain periods and season, seasons in life which have definite beginnings and definite ends for you, for your family and for your church. And the thing to do is not only be aware of the end of one season and the beginning of another season, but to be able to step into the new season, hearing God's voice, and go forward with Him to receive all that He has for you in this latest season. What I'm saying is I believe the new season for this church. I believe there's been a dry season. And I believe the cloud is rising and the rain is going to come and the seeds that you've sown that were negative seeds are going to grow into a positive plant. And some of you have got negative seeds. Plant those negative seeds that God make this into a positive plant. I believe you're going to do it in the new season. I, I, I detect that this church is stepping into a new season. I, I believe it in the, in the depths of my heart and soul. And because the church is made up of lots of individuals, Therefore, the individuals also are stepping into a new season. A new season is coming. And, and, and this is my prayer tonight for you and for this church, that this church will step out in this period of change and grasping hold of the promises of God. I don't know if this is on, on the next slide or not, but it's, it's, it's too good not to be. But if it's not, you'll listen up and you'll get, you'll, get the, you'll get the rhythm. of It's a rhythm in this. God gave me a rhythm with this. When God gave me this, the rhythm that's coming out of God, this is so good. Uh, there's a period of change and we need to grasp hold of the promises of God, knowing the protection of God, exercising the necessary preparation from God and receiving the prosperity that comes from God in this period of change. Wow. I would have copyright that. Throwing a card and sell for you. The book of Joshua begins with the end of one season and the beginning of another. Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. Look at this headline. Yeah, you love this, don't you? God's speaking. Sometimes God isn't one to ask. You're one to God say, well, they're there, they're poor people. One of your seasons has finished, and it's a better season coming. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, uh, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, hey, the next bit, Moses, my servant, is dead. Thank you, Lord. You could have said that any more gently now, could you? But God Moses, you need to say you're dead. Now that's a wonderful, blunt greeting, and in general, what we do, you know about the eulogy, that's the good word, we've got a thing called an obituary. And that's where we just say a little bit about the person's dead. We say, some say, born then, died then, all over, baby, that's it. Yeah, that's what we say at funerals. But the reason God is saying this to Joshua is twofold. Number one, you are now the leader following a very long tenure of Moses' leadership. And this is a brand new season, and however we did things before, we're going to do them just a bit different now in this new season, whatever your expectations were before, you would better know this, this is a new day. Get not going to a new day. A new day. Uh, you, you, you teenagers that turned 17 this year and you are finishing up with high school like now, it's a new day. Every you did things before, it's all going to be different. If you're living in my house, you'll be playing board now, you get dough, right? Put it out there, Paris. New expectations, new methods, new outcomes. So fasten your seatbelts for the right people. That's what I'm talking about. Joshua 1 2. Now then. Now then. I just want to serve you again, just in case you can get the first one there. I just want to serve you. Now then. You and all these people. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I believe God is saying to you, and he's saying to us, you the individual, us uh, corporately, uh, today one era has concluded and another era is beginning today. It's interesting, just through the week, just a few days ago, uh, I wrote out a, a job description and a contract uh, for our new kids' church director. 
And I'm not done yet, because you see, what happens over another building is not just kids' church, also nursery happens. I'll be writing out another contract in the very near future, and a job description for the person who's going to be the nursery director. And you don't know who it is. Isn't that cool? Because I don't know who it is either, it's exciting, because I will, within a week or so, I will know, and you will hear from me. And, and, and I'll tell you what, if they don't get on with Abigail Stevenson, who got the gig first, that, that'd be bad luck for them. They just need to get on with her, because they need to cooperate and, uh, and do things together. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River, you're going in. So I believe God is saying we're getting into a new era. And so, firstly, the period of change. Secondly, the promise of God. Joshua 1 3. I, I love this. I love this. Joshua 1 3. Get ready, write notes. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. And, and, and I think about this. God promised Moses Middle East real estate. And you would say today that's not worth, you know, two bob. It's not worth nothing. But, but you got Middle East real estate. God has asked us to be fellow builders with Him as He builds His church upon the rock of the revelation that is Jesus Christ. And here is His promise as we team with Him to build His church. Jesus said to His disciples one day, Who's everyone saying that I am? And they said, You know, uh, people are saying you, that, that you could be Jeremiah come back, you could be Elijah the prophet come back, one of the other prophets, you might even be John the Baptist who we had last week and, and all those things. And Jesus got fed up and said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, Jesus said to him, uh, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father who is in heaven gave you the revelation. And then he said, Matthew 18, 18, King James, he said this, he said, upon this rock of the revelation that you have just given me, I will build my church and the gates of hell will what? Not prevail against it. And you think about gates, what do gates do? I, I, I've heard people preach on this and they sound like gates are on the attack. You, you, your gate may attack you if it swings in the breeze and whacks for one, but generally gates do not attack. Uh, generally gates aren't doing it. I have never seen a gate charging down the road to attack a person, or a vehicle, or a house, or a building. Gates don't generally do that at all. Gates are not offensive, they are defensive. The idea of gates is not to attack but to defend. Gates are there to keep you out or get something in. So what Jesus is saying about his church is that his church is on the attack. And the gates are trying to defend something. The gates of hell are trying to defend the community that needs Jesus against us. Now, hell does not want us to get into this community. That's why we're doing everything with these cards to show you what our focus is, that we all be aligned and get this job done so the gates of hell will not prevail against us. The gates of hell will not stop the church. That's what Jesus just said. The gates of hell will not stop. Joshua 1 3. I will give you every place you set your foot. Earlier this month, we began our annual uh, spring letterbox drop into the suburbs of Balboas. And if you haven't picked any of those up yet, now's a good time. Spring's nearly done, but you've still got some of those left the spring offensive. We are claiming these suburbs for Jesus. We are claiming the houses in the suburbs for Jesus. We are claiming the families in the homes for Jesus. And God said so. And so as we go and we put these little care cards, these little postcards in the letter boxes, you need to pray as you go. And say, Lord, I'm claiming the promise, Joshua 1.3, every place I set my foot, I'm claiming it for you. You promised it and I'm going for it. And every house, in every place, every street that I step into, I'm claiming it for you. Joshua 1 4, just to give you some more, your territory will accept. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a, a bigger place and a bigger space. And for Joshua and his people, uh, the extension related to the entirety of the promised land, capital P, capital L, in the Middle East. But for us, it relates to Balbibus, to all of Rockingham, and to the Quinana suburbs. I'm, I'm giving you that. So there is, number one, the period of change. Number two, the promise from God. Number three, the protection from God. In this little uh, mini-series, we're doing three messages in this uh, series titled Stepping Out. Uh, when you step out in faith, uh, following the call of the Spirit of God, that doesn't always mean that your experience will be smooth sailing. In fact, until you step out, you might have been smooth sailing. 
And then you heard the voice of God and stepped out and then the smooth stone stopped. And, and once, once you stepped out, in faith the seas got rough. But, but that is how it can be. But here's what you need to know. When God calls you into your new season, asks you to step out in faith where he will extend your territory, if and when the going gets rough, he will protect you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope you know that. You're going to get to know that tonight. Joshua 1, five, the first part of that uh, fifth verse, no one, uh, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And so the promise I will give you, the protection I am with you. God, he, he's got a promise here for you. You need to catch the promise tonight. He's got two promises there. I will give you and I am with you. And this is a repetitive theme, the presence of God to his people as he calls us uh, to step out. Uh, the book of Isaiah uh, is about the return, essentially about Judah going into captivity in Babylon and then about them returning from Babylon to Jerusalem, they're coming home. That's, that's the book of Isaiah. And God said to them, I'm calling you to step out and come home, he says through the prophet Isaiah. And he says, in effect, it may be a tough journey to come home. It, it may not be that easy. He says, I'm going to level the roadway home, I'm going to fill in the valleys, and I'm going to level the mountains. Here's what you need to know, and here's what you need to know tonight. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Here we go on the screen. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by... Hey, who knows your name? You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you step out, you will know the experience of and the very presence of God with you. You, you need to know that. Joshua 1, 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in case you're tempted to think, well, that's in Old Testament, Gordon, but we're living in New Testament times. That's just Old Testament stuff, not for us today. Well, I want to take you over to the book of Hebrews and the New Testament, where the New Testament writer makes it very, 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 very clear that he believes it's for us today, and I believe it's for us today. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And so we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can, what can the immortals do to me? What can the immortals do? God has you covered, that's what they're saying. God has your back. When you step out, God has you covered. He surrounds you. And so number one, a period of change. Number two, the promise of God. Number three, the protection from God. Number three, the preparation that God calls us to. Whatever it is that you will step out into in any arena, preparation is necessary prior to pursuing the promise and the possession. Prepare an edge of you. No one's starting if you haven't prepared. Now, you'll be sad later on if you haven't done the preparation. Count the cost. You need to do all of these things. Joshua 1, 6 and 7, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people, Joshua, to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and what? Courageous. Very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be what? Successful. successful. God wants you to be successful wherever you go. Do you believe that? God says, I want you to be successful. So obey the principles of God once he spells out in his word. Stay true to them. Don't deviate from them to the right or to the left. This is your preparation. And another promise from the God of the word is that in doing so, you'll be strong and courageous. In fact, very courageous. And he really means it because he said it twice. Say, so, well, Lord, you don't know my situation. Yeah, but God does. No, he didn't. I'm just telling you what God said. And God knows your situation. And then your preparation as you engage with His Word, and you need to engage with His Word, you need to be with the Word. It's threefold. And what He says in that verse I just read, He says, meditate on it. He says, always have it on your lips. Yeah? That's not meditate, that's another thing. And He said, and do it. Uh, he says, meditate on it, always have it on your lips, and, and do it. So, Christian believers, Meditation is not just for yoga people. It's for us, Christian believers. And in case you don't know what meditation is, I'm going to teach you right now. I'm not going to get you to do it. I'm going to teach you and then you can go home and do it, right? All the time. Every day. Every hour. You will. I want to give you some understanding. 
A synonym for meditation is rumination. You go, Gordon, you haven't got me thought, I don't know what that is. That's a cow said. We call it chewing your cud. A cow trick, you ever seen a cow trick your cud? That's two ways. Some of you are doing it. I should get you up here, you can show them how it's done. There's two away there. What, what a cow does, it, it'll, it, whether it's dry hay or green grass, whatever it is, it, it, it'll, it'll get a mouthful and chew on it and then it'll take it right down. And then it'll belch it back up again. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not a cow? I'm just teaching about cows and rumination so you get meditation because I'm not doing the grass thing with you, I'm doing the word of God thing with you. And, and then after chewing on it again second time, this is stuff that's been down here and now it's belched up, chews on it the second time, it takes it back down in here again. You think it's done yet? It's not done. It's going to belch it back up again. It's going to chew on it again. It's going to keep on doing that all day. And that's what you to do with the Word of God. You to chew on it, take it into your being, and belch the Word of God back up and chew on it again. It's no good just ticking the box. So I've done a new version today. I've ticked the box. And man, I've done 10 plans today. I've finished all. God's not impressed. He says, you haven't done anything. You just ticked the box. You need to chew on the word. Whatever that verse is, the word of the day, if that's the one you're going to do, you need to be thinking about it again by lunchtime, by afternoon time, tea time, and by dinner time, and then by bedtime you need to be thinking on it again. When you wake up the next morning before you do the next verse of the day, you haven't done with this one yet, you need to be chewing on it again. Rumination, thing deep into you. That is meditation. That is meditation. And it was on your lips. Yeah. This is not meditation. You need to say the word of God out loud. Catherine had no idea what I was preaching on because she had finished up on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. I got started on this message at 5 past 3 on Wednesday. She had no idea. She gets up and she rattled off all those verses before that just got my heart and head. And, and you need to try memorizing scripture. When you memorize it, you just come out with it you like. You can have Philippians 4.13. It's, it's in the hard drive. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. You may need that one day. I need it every day. I can do all things in Christ. That's what Romans 1, 6, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. I, I need the power of God. I think you need the power of God. You need that verse. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Sometimes you go, oh man, if only I didn't do this church thing where people give me grief. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for all who believe. You want more? Isaiah 55 verse 11. My word said God will not return to me void or empty. I need that one every Sunday. I, sometimes I, I know that when I preach, it was like I hit a home run. I hit the ball right out the park. And that was a good one. I know it was. I was done with the Lord. Done with you today. They all look flat. I feel flat. And I know I did. He says, Gordon, Isaiah 55 11. My word will not return void. And he says, Gordon, it's not about the sower, you're the sower, it's about the seed. It's about the seed. His word will not return void. He says, it will accomplish that for which I sent it. Mark 10 27. All things are possible with God. With human beings, they're not with God. Doesn't matter just do for starters. Get some more into your spirit. Memorize verses and speak the name of Jesus into your situation. I'm hoping I've got a number of speakers lined up for 2018. As pastors, we've got to do 2018. I'm up to this time next year already. Okay? I've got a speaker for uh, Partnership Sunday next year. Last Sunday in October. Pastor Daniel Indra Jai landed that fish. I feel pretty good about that. Right? I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying to get uh, Rob Mason. Rob Mason just happens to be Wes Beavis' brother-in-law. And we had Wes Beavis earlier this year. I kind of know Rob independent of Wes, but I know them both. And Rob has been a pastor for like 27 years. I think he just quit the ministry earlier this year. Uh, Rob has suffered depression a couple of years ago. And he decided to go into ministry, ministry to people with depression. And I just look around my congregation sometimes I think, wow, why did I get them all? Other churches don't seem to have the press book, you know. And, and I think, oh, no, it can happen anyway. And I've been reading some of the stuff that Rob has been writing. One of the, one of the things he says, he says, you know, people that suffer depression need to do breathing exercises. And this is just like a, it's a very practical thing. You get all depressed and you get attacks of anxiety. 
stop breathing. And then I was thinking about that and thinking, you know, what if we breathed out the name of Jesus? And then someone from the platform said that this morning. I thought, have they been reading my mail? Breathe the name of Jesus into your state of depression. Breathe the name of Jesus into whatever your situation may be. Breathe the name of Jesus into your good state, your happy state, and make it happier. We won't be able to put up with you that happy, you know what I mean? Breathe the name of Jesus into whatever your situation might be. Get the word of God on your lips. This is part of your preparation as you press into the purpose for which God is calling you to process. Joshua 1, 10 and 11. And so Joshua, I hope it was good for you. Did you, did you catch something there? Yeah. You're going to use this? I hope you are. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp, and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Preparation, preparation. Three days from now, you'll cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. And so their provisions, you know, you get your provisions ready, preparation. For them, you know, it would have been like food and clothing and blankets and, and, and like that. But our, our provisions for our ministry journey will be the opportunities to take up any form of training or equipping and, and upskilling. Uh, our, our preparation would be to enter into a partnership covenant that seven people did today. And the eighth one that came to our lessons is considering believers' baptism right now. And while you're not more excited than you are, it's beyond me. <laughs> you can't get excited if you're allowed to in this church. We preach and teach for faith, positivity and potential. If we say, be stand for vitality. That's what we say. Yeah. So the period of change, number one. Number two, promises of God. Number three, protection from God. Number four, preparation to pursue the promise and the possession. And number five, prosperity. Anyone up for it? Yes. Okay, let's go. Joshua 1 11. Go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you as your own. These people were going to receive from God something they had never previously ever seen or had before. They had been slaves in Egypt, and many of the ones that are right here, most of them in fact, the majority of them were born on the trip from Egypt to here. They, all they'd known was wandering around in the desert. They had not known entering into their own land. They were going to be blessed. Joshua 1, 8, keep the law of God always on your... You can say that too if you want to. Oh, but, hey, this is what we're going to do. Because it's a big day for me. I've done two partnership classes in the morning service. And no, most of you, one or two of you are in the part, the rest of you weren't. So you've got to catch up with me. So let's do this. Joshua 1 8. Here we go. Would you read this with me? Loudly. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and what? Successful. Isn't that a good verse? You have it on your lips. That's really cool. Church, we are entering a new season. People of this church, probably we're entering a new season. Individuals, you're entering a new season. God is wanting for us and for you to make progress as you, as us, as we receive and progress as, and, per, and pursue the purposes and the prosperity that he has for you according to his promises. Prosperity, by the way, I don't know if you've ever read any of the Donald Duck comics way back when. I haven't read any for a long time. I don't know if they do comics anymore either. And I go to news agents to look for comics. I used to. You know, like that big, maybe. That big maybe. And in the Donald Duck uh, Empire, about the Daisy Duck being the girlfriend, there was an uncle, and his name was Scrooge McDuck. Anyone ever? Anyone ever he, he was so rich, he had bins full of gold and money. What he would do, if, uh, you, if you got a swimming pool, you'd go, in some of the, you'd go and dive in your swimming pool to start your day. He would dive into his bin of gold and money and just sort of throw it up in the air, gold, dust on his hair, you know, and like that. Prosperity is not you wallowing in your gold and your dollars like Scrooge McDuck. That, 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 that's not it at all. But it is living according to the abundance that Jesus promised you and died for you to have. John 10, verse 10, the second part of that verse, I have come, said Jesus, that they may have life and have it more. 
abundantly. And when you are blessed, the blessing is not for you to wallow in, it's for you to share with others. And so the saying, blessed to be a blessing, is a reality. And the mission of this church is showing people all they can become in Christ, which is essentially means that we are, that we are going to work as a church at helping you rise to your God-given potential. And now that you are part of the church, you're going to help others rise to their God-given potential. And when we are all blessed in this way, we get to be a bigger team that can touch the lives of many people and help them rise uh, to their God-given potential. Get ready to land. Joshua 1-2. Now then. Joshua 1-2. Now then, you and all these people, Get ready to cross over into the land I'm about to give them. My question to you is, are you up for it? And if your answer is no, I just want to tell you, Jesus is up to it on your behalf. Father in heaven, it's a new season. Many people here are needing a new season. I just sense it so deeply within my spirit that just as surely as in Joshua's day, uh, the death of Moses signaled a brand new season and now they're about to enter into the promised land. Uh, there are situations and circumstances for this church has been a dry time and now there is a cloud and we hear the sound of rain as you water this land, this church, as you pour out the spirit and you're doing something new. Lord, I imagine in the day of Joshua as they, as Joshua sent out his officers to tell the people that to get their provisions ready, be prepared to enter in. There would have been a state of nervousness because they'd never entered in before. Didn't know this land. Didn't know this situation. Uh, new expectations. New way of doing things. And you're calling your people to enter into something new. Uh, you're calling us in a brand new way to sense uh, the Holy Spirit in our being. Uh, Father God, you've taken us through a series as a church over the last couple of months uh, about hosting the presence, about having the Holy Spirit not just living in us and abiding on us, but through us being able to abide and rest upon others. Father, take us forward. Uh, whether we're scared or not, take us forward. Help us to move in. You've given us the promises and you want us to rest in those promises as we move forward. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let the word of God be always on your lips. Let's stand, church. We've got a song to sing tonight. And this song is about the promises of God. And, uh, and we're going to sing that. We're going to do communion up with some tonight. Sang it, believe it, take hold of the bread because Jesus paid the price with his body on the cross, and this bread speaks of his body. Take the bread right now. Think of the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take it into you. Meditate on the word of God.
a sense of something new on the horizon for each one of us and for this church. We're breaking through. We're crossing the river, entering into the promised land that you have for us. Every place where we place our foot, you promised us. Thank you, Father God. For those who are struggling with issues here tonight, whether family issues, financial issues, other issues, health issues, Father God, you, you're the healer, you're the provider. Uh, you, you're, you're our Father, the God and Father of every family in heaven and on earth. And we look to you, our Father God, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you give Jesus a big hand clap and I'll listen to you. Thank you, in the cafe. There is a coffee machine in there. Be blessed. Have a fantastic week. Make sure you get to your next group and do the last study for our group anyway from Bill Johnson material. And if you've got two more to do, get them done. All right? See you next Sunday.